This classic Kenshi review, triple S, rank, smuggling, starvation and slavery. Pretty accurate. Let's react it. Hey hey people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering an educational game about the it's harsh realities one. of post-apocalyptic society. A <laughs> game where you can be anything you want. I love how he's not even holding the gun properly, like these bugs are always sunny, man. Ignore the mass murder, by the way. Want to be do anything you want to do as long as all the things you want to do are extremely illegal morally dubious and outright sadistic a game where everything yep. wants to either eat you cook you suck out your organs or peel off your skin and use it as a rug a game where being forced into slavery is considered a good outcome Com yeah there's even a race which has good perks to be a slave i think that was it compared <laughs> to having your arms and legs eaten off by a pack of giraffes i'm talking Would of be. course about kenshi kenshi takes place in a world that has been plunged into a technological dark age after an unknown disaster fortnite will not be on the next soldier console <laughs> this game man annihilated modern society and now everyone's back to using straw hats and katanas kenshi is actually the canonical sequel to battle realms many Bro, theorize how used to remember battle realms like this was pure this is pure history right now what we are seeing here this was truly a classic a feudal China <laughs> ended up looking like this, but Good the ideas. popular opinion is that after endless droughts and famine, the lack of easily available rice and water, which are the two elements needed to form a Chinaman, led to an uncontrolled <laughs> period of True. rapid population decline. Seeing that China was at its weakest, the Australians invaded, and the rest is history. Kenji okay. plays like some strange hybrid of Mountain Blade, Jagged Alliance, and Death Jam fight for New York. Truly, it has some... Um... Things which res uh, resemble Mountain Blade, like not all things, but just a few mechanics and which really stands out. I, I noticed that. After about 10 autistic years of development, it's finally here. Featuring drug trafficking, human trafficking, and giant enemy crabs. Kenshi, it's got it all. To begin, you need to choose from one of 13 different starting scenarios. You can start as anything from a nameless vagabond, a trader with connections and money to spare, or even a guy who's hit rock bottom. No money, no food, Nothing. and no masturbation. The character <laughs> you start with can be fully customized. You can start as a human, a shack man, a bug man, or a Skelly Man, which all have their own respective perks and penalties. Humans are, of course, good at everything. But you know what they're not good at? Surviving acid rain, or swimming <laughs> in acid, or getting too close to one of these. Bugmen are exceptional at losing limbs and slavery. Are they good at capturing yeah, slaves? Yeah, we, we, this race, exactly. No, we are good at being slaves. <laughs> no, they're good at being slaves. Yep. Sheks are good at fighting. They're not good at reasoning, critical thinking, and having any sort of long-term planning. Ooh. Skelly men are better at everything, which is why everyone's afraid of them. They're also probably responsible for destroying the world. Maybe. Being perfect Maybe. comes at a price. You can't heal. You need repairs instead, and good luck finding a mechanic in a desert. Yeah, However, so many prosthetics in this game. You need to replace so many limbs. It's insane. The character you start with isn't special. They've got stats and skills like everyone else. They can also permanently die like everyone else. A game of Kenshi only truly ends when all of your characters are six feet under. There's no real objective in Kenshi. That objective can be whatever you want it to be. Just like getting bullied in high school, the core philosophy <laughs> of Kenshi is get your shit kicked in and get stronger, survive, and fight another day. Once you get into your first fight, you'll understand what I mean. Kenshi uses a limb-based physics system to determine whether attacks actually connect, and you don't die outright. Usually, your limbs suffer too much damage, forcing you to crawl on the ground or fight with a broken arm as your broken appendages flail around. It looks pretty weird, but the hitbox are kinda accurate. Like, this, this is not bad at all helplessly. If you spill out too much blood or intestines, you'll collapse unconscious instead. You can still wake up from a trauma and bandage yourself together, or rely on the help of allies to pop your bones back in place and carry you to relative safety. However, <laughs> take too much damage in a short span of time, and you might permanently lose an arm or a leg. If that happens, you can install prosthetic limbs, but having a bucket instead of a foot isn't exactly ideal, so hold on to those. But if your organs take too much damage, don't worry about prosthetics because you're already fucking dead. <laughs> All that's left is to strip you down and chuck you in the furnace, because cremation is a far safer solution than yep, letting- it will attract some animals, 
which try to eat your body. Your corpse fume up and attract the bone dogs. Remember yep. I said combat uses physics? Because understanding that is extremely important. Characters make different swings and motions with different weapons, which also change as you get more experienced. If a swing physically connects with an enemy, it counts as a hit. Not only that, if there were, let's say, three enemies standing closely packed together, they'll all get cut by the same swing. Basically, I'm telling you that this if you want to die stuff. very quickly, gang up on an enemy, because that's a great idea. He'll take a single broad horizontal swing and decapitate your entire Ooh. team. It's better to have characters duel each enemy or try and overwhelm them with a variety of attacks. You can even do some crazy micro and make your characters manually evade attacks while everyone else flanks them from the side. Combat is real. Oh, that's fucking. some RTS micro shit. Like, this is insane good. It's responsive and only gets more entertaining as you get the hang of it. In the beginning, you're nothing but a walking sack of rice weed. By the end, you're still, still a walking yeah. sack of rice weed, but hey, you can stage dive leviathans like a baller. But combat's only one of many things you do in Kenshi. It's a means to an end, and achieving any of your goals requires money. Money buys you food, equipment, protection, and companions. You can't get anywhere without it, but you can't get it anywhere for free. To make money, we need to expect Explore, see beautiful and bizarre places with our own sets of risks and challenges, such as dust storms, gas clouds, flesh-eating cannibals, flesh-eating <laughs> spiders, lack of water, too much water, and this. I don't recommend stepping yep. into one of these, don't but they can it. outrun any character, so the only real way of dodging them is by getting out of the way very quickly, or by traveling at night. Luckily, they're not as dangerous once they fall out of the sky. Besides all the different places that can get you killed there's a lot of interesting people to meet throughout the world hey i uh, think i've had the robots <laughs> oh no oh yeah i tried to peel your skin off enough yeah. of kenshi for today actually turns out they're completely friendly they just need some help peeling potatoes <laughs> unfortunately it turned out i was the potato and my limbs had to be peeled off i can conclusively yeah. say this is probably the most effective weight loss plan i've ever seen in my life there's a lot of factions out there and most of them aren't skin bandits and once you meet them you'll realize they're even worse you can interact with them help them and even pledge allegiance to their cause or you can kidnap them and execute their leaders, forcing them to crumble and or the lack of leadership. Chad Even better, the resulting power vacuum leads to rival factions taking over and potentially expanding across the world. Kenshi lets you do that. It even encourages you to do that. Sooner or later, your nomadic lifestyle of running from city to city will get old. Why pay for methanol poisoning when we can make our own? Why suffer the daily struggle when we can grow our own weed and process it into soft, sticky mounds of hash, which will smuggle into the United Cities using Amazon Prime. Here's wow. Hobbs, demonstrating our one-day Prime delivery option. Like He's they will kill that person, I think. Currently sneaking past the border at a comfortable land speed of 26 miles per hour. The guards don't even see him. If they do, they'll pretend they didn't. Intimidated by the man Naruto running through their gates oh. with over 50 kilos of solid yeah. cash on his back. As you've probably- Is it because of detection? Like it needs uh, like a few seconds till they actually see you so he can just run through that shit? figured out, you can make your own outpost. At the start, it won't be anything special and you'll be barely scraping by to survive. But once you get some research and technology going, you'll be on your way to establishing a thriving city, provided you don't get murdered, robbed, or eaten while doing so. Setting up an outpost changes the game completely. You now have a place to live, but everyone wants to take what they can't have. And they will, unless your defenses hold up. Each region has its own set of wildlife and factions that will try and and ruin your day. In my case, I set up in the desert. The this soil is great. Like most of these uh, single player games, they should have like different faction who, which battle each other out. Like, when, when, you know this feeling when you get into a new area and you, you see two different factions battling each other. This was the best feeling in like, uh, for example, Halo, like a completely different genre, but it will apply to uh, like nearly every genre. You love that shit. Like I love that shit. It, it feels great. Sucked. The crops didn't. Like you're not the only person in this world who, who does it. Like they are actually trying to uh, outbid each, each other, uh, to battle each other out and win more territory. Like passively gaining more territory after you've played, uh, have spent so much time in a game. That, that would be great. Like if they can do that shit, I would play that game in an instant. I love that. 
pro, but at least I was only under attack every day by four different factions. Starving bandits Not kept bad, coming bad. to beg for food. They got a free bolt in the mouth instead. The dust bandits just wanted to kill us. At least they were honest <laughs> about it. The shacks kept asking for a good clean fight, so I walled myself off and turned them into pincushions. The black dragon ninjas? Black dragon ninjas can go fuck themselves. We're suffering our second famine this season, and it's all because a pack of weeaboos with tin hats keep dabbing Weeps away with our bread baskets. And you know what? The raids aren't even the worst part. It was Sundays, Kenshi, where every Sunday is prayer day, oh, and you shit. don't want to skip out on prayer day. Oh, you missed your Bible. Don't worry, this one's on me. Oh, you can't make prayer day because you're in a coma from severe head trauma? <laughs> I literally do not give a shit. I don't care if there's oh, enemies bashing at your gates. You raise those shits right now, and I'm giving you to the count of five to come pray to our lord and savior, Okran. If you don't come out right now, I'm gonna burn this place to the ground and kill every blasphemous pagan who takes the name of the lord in vain. And we're gonna do this? Yep, those crusaders, they tank. These are beast animals, man. You can't really fight them off. Every Sunday, work. prayer day, is the best goddamn day. Unlike those lazy preachers in real life, the Holy Nation priests will personally travel all the way to your base together with their faithful team of heavily armed paladins, and I don't recommend making them upset. If you yep. can survive all of that, having an outpost lets you really expand on your options. You can even assign people to tasks and functions using an automated job system, and essentially sit back while they generate money and get stuck on terrain. That's After nice. securing a stable source of food, you naturally want more people to eat it. If that doesn't work, buy yourself a couple of animals. They'll eat through your survival rations in no time. Animals are a mixed blessing, so I've arranged them in order what of usefulness. Goats, which are walking sacks of meat. Bone dogs, which are the body cleanup crews of Kenshi. Very cute. <laughs> I recommend getting a pack of them just to watch them play fetch with each other. There's also garus and bulls, which are walking sacks of storage space and absolutely essential for trading and carrying all of your stolen ceramic bowls. And Eesh. finally, there's crabs, which are objectively the greatest animals for both land-based and naval combat. Oh, real funny, Seth. Now, show me a squad of them. I admit, I got really uncreative with naming them after the first Wait, dozen- Wait, you can tame them? Or so. Duh. You're not even limited to a single outpost. You can build an outpost wherever you want. Just be prepared for the consequences once other people start to take notice. From there, the world is your oyster, and it's waiting to be Crap devoured controller. by your legions of domesticated crustaceans. Your characters don't even have to be in the same region as each other. The game keeps track of everything in real time, no matter where they are on the map. You can Bro. send squads and expeditions out into the wild. This is some insane shit. Like real time over the entire map. That's a, that's um, impressive, but uh, will only work with a game like this, which has shit graphics. If a game has good graphics, you will, like it, it can't load all the, these these files at once, man. That's insane while your peasants work their lives away in your sweatshops. And you sort of have to as well. You can't unlock any of the later research trees without plundering the remains of ancient civilization. So you can finally harness the ancient secrets of eggplant hydroponics. Kenshi <laughs> is a wonderful, bizarre, and at times absolutely brutal game with a completely unique setting. It's an absolute joy to play, and I've greatly enjoyed watching my life spiral out of control as I feed my newfound adventure. Addiction. I, of course, give it the biggest score and my highest recommendation. I give it 250 stacks of wheat straw over the insane fucking attack range of blood spiders. Seriously, <laughs> look at that shit. Luckily, you don't have to deal with it. Kenshi is extremely mod friendly, and most of the issues you have in the game can be easily fixed through modding. I've attached my mod list in the description below, and it should contain the bare essentials to improve gameplay without significant changing anything. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of potatoes to peel, but oh, don't worry, okay. I've got a lot of free time. As always, Completely more content not. to come, so stay tuned. Also, earlier this month, I made a shitty <laughs> website introducing seftseentach.com. <gasps> it's... Will it get banned for that shit? hot garbage, but it's also no, got so links anything. to all my videos, especially the banned ones. Come check it out. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Another Have a good one. one. This is another great one.
no fucking way. Fucking Gotten. What if the demons have a mate? It's time for me to choose my path. Power of my god hand. No evil doer will get Bro. Did he made a did he made a god hand review? If he died, we're gonna rig to that one immediately after this one. We'll upload that one tomorrow, but but yeah, that mystery was insane. Like this always great content. Seth Zin Touch, just subscribe to him. Like those videos, these are videos you can always watch. Like it's made in 2019. I will probably watch this shit again and like one or two years or three months doesn't matter like this is this is some replayable uh, video he only he can do that okay uh, there, are, there are a few exceptions like it's insane and yeah thank you for watching i guess you've enjoyed that shit because you you're still watching and I'll see you next time. Wafer out.